reports that skill-based matchmaking has actually become stricter since the recent update. Has 343 been repackaging codings to sell to us? And a really important feature that people have been asking for a long time in Forge has been leaked. In a recent video from Mimblitz, talks about his experience saying that skill-based matchmaking has actually become stricter in big team battles. With the recharge update that came out last week, guys, about 1.6 gigabytes for whatever reason, apparently a lot of it was back-end skill-based matchmaking being stricter, where Mimblitz reports that he can't even find games of big team battle anymore. Accelerate here, who's another live streamer who also plays a lot of big team battle, that sad day for big team battle. I haven't felt like this since six man restrictions were imposed in Halo 5 Warzone. Can't find games unless I'm queuing up around four or less people, regardless of their skill. Never thought I'd have to have this issue on East US servers. Basically saying like I'm in the US, which is the most populated area for Halo and not be able to find games is kind of crazy. Continuing on saying that he's just extremely saddened by what seems to be a shadow change in big team battle queuing. Games went from plentiful and fast to slow queuing and matching some people who are repeatedly all night, no matter how long you play kind of thing. So yeah, I can imagine this being incredibly frustrating for literally anybody. I don't think anybody would want to have this happen within the game. I know that skill-based matchmaking is apparently supposed to try to keep people like in the game longer, supposedly. Uh, from my experience, uh, yeah, definitely skill-based match matching is definitely in the game. And it definitely makes, well, social play not really feel like social anymore. But when your skill-based matchmaking is so strict where people can't even find games to play, it's like, come on, like, we're just playing social here. You don't need to try so hard to find evenly balanced games. And also how this was just like shadow dropped on that patch update. So I was also very concerned about like, why was this recharge update like 1.5, 1.3 gigabytes when it's just updating the map of recharge? Like I don't expect it to be that large of a file update. And apparently, yeah, it was a lot of back ends up to where now Big Team Battle is just as sweaty as the rest of Halo, sadly. And the lack of transparency over this matchmaking system is also extra frustrating to us players. Now I can understand why 343 want to keep that a secret though, mainly because if people know how the matchmaking system works, well, they're going to cheese it to try to ruin someone else's game time experience. Or you say like tune matchmaking algorithm to have it be a better performance for games or something like that. You know, there's a, there's a PR way to basically put the whole thing together. But the fact that it just wasn't mentioned at all within the patch notes, I didn't even think we got like a patch notes when it came to that update because uh, it was just, you know, supposed to be just recharged, but apparently it was a lot more than that. Now this is a developing story. If there's any changes when it comes to the matchmaking of uh, Big Team Battle or 343 states anything about this, you know, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. Before we go any further, I have to ask one thing. Would you please tap that like button? It would really help me out. Really help support the channel and get more eyeballs on the channel. So please help me and press that like button. Now this is definitely some rage bait kind of stuff here, but Mint Blitz shared this Twitter for picture from somebody else basically just saying thoughts on the halo infinite coding system pretty much like a lol moment kind of thing because look at how much red black and white options there are especially since with one of the recent codings when it comes to the hs valencia drops was a another red black and white coding which not gonna lie does look nice i believe all these other coatings are tied behind pavements as well so this is like the first random black and white coding you can get for free by just checking out an hds event though it's another one of those things where it's like Especially for the sniper rifle and a lot of the external weapons, like you know, like the commander rifle, the Hydra sniper rifle, shotgun, stuff like that. There aren't a whole lot of coatings to mix up the experience with the customization on here. And again, just feels kind of limited, feels kind of like repackaged and stuff like that, where it just like doesn't really feel the way it should be. You know, it should be a little bit more unique, a little bit more fun and stuff like that, especially with a sniper rifle, like. People are going to want to use a sniper rifle coating a lot. You can go a little ham on the variety when it comes to this stuff. But it seems like 343 is kind of just repackaging a lot of these coatings, which is the first, that's, not, that's also not the first time we've seen this, right? First example that comes to my mind is the HCS winter coating compared to the watchdog coating. The watchdog coating is something you earn for creating 152 in Halo 5. Not an easy task, 
But then you look over here on the left side, the HDS winter coating, which came from just watching the events, right? Very similar coatings, again, just minor alterations, which definitely kind of, you know, cheapened the value of like the watchdog coatings, which were a really big feat for people to try to accomplish. Like I didn't even bother trying to accomplish it. And I played a ton of Halo 5. I didn't play for XP in mine. I got up to like 149. I didn't think that like, I didn't want to make myself hate the game be able to get like a coating in the game. So it seems like 343 is kind of being like repeat offenders when it comes to repackaging coatings to give players another reason either to watch ACS events or pay for some more microtransactions or grind through a battle pass. Though something like the coating that was for the HES drop, this diamond encrusted coating, that looks awesome. That's something that's unique, it's fun, it really stands out as something like that, something I got in the game kind of thing. That's really awesome. 343 needs to do some more legacy. I do think that this coating also is also gonna be part of a actual like coating for your armor and like a lot of other things. So we're gonna be seeing more stuff like this. And also I think this might be the first step forward to 343 really trying to expand what the customization they have to offer is like what kind of art styles they can play around with when it comes to Halo and not just simple colors, but like actual like unique bits of customization that really like stand out and then either you grind it for or paid for. This is pretty standard stuff when it comes to most shooters out there. When the game first comes out, they're pretty reserved with the customization, but as the game progresses, more weird and or unique or awesome things are kind of brought in that are a little bit more flashy, don't really fit in with like the lore of the game or whatever, but looks kind of cool. Though I would say 343, like, but still something a little different besides red, black, and white. I'm just saying, mix it up a little bit. Now here's a Forge feature people have been requesting for years, if not over a decade now at this point, and it's been object scaling and this leaked image just came out here this leaked video came out on twitter and look at this taking a spartan and just blowing them up to a larger size this is something that forges have been requesting for so long be able to scale objects rather than having to stack multiple objects on top of each other which would actually add more polygons to the map meaning it'd be more intensive graphically and stuff like that and really hurt with the fidelity of the match right there but now Something like this, where you can actually scale the object, not just by size, but like you can also change like the width and the height and things like that. That's incredible. You know, this also ties into what I've been hearing a lot when it comes to the people part of the Forge Council who I've had a chance to talk to, you know, here and there a little bit in passing. They've said that Halo Infinite's Forge is going to be the best Forge mode we've ever had within the franchise, which is a big statement to say especially after halo 5 which certainly was the best forge we've ever had to do better than that well i'm definitely looking forward to it we do know that we will be having a flighting of halo infinite's forge according to the roadmap by 343 forge open beta should be happening around september which sounds about right when it comes to this because we're beginning late august we're going to be getting the of uh, actual campaign network co-op sounds like in mid july which we now have confirmed that uh, the flighting for the co-op will happen then as well the week of july 11th uh we'll see when exactly the date is i'm assuming probably that friday but then they re-edited the date saying the week of july 11th which i'm sure it would still be the friday as most of the flights do happen over the weekend Thursday usually at the earliest or something like that so that's some really good information to know uh, so we should be looking towards September once these network co-op has been updated let Gus go out and play around with it then they're gonna be moving over to getting that forge beta going for us all but if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me recently check out this place right here got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there thanks so much for watching greatly appreciate it we'll catch you all in the next one peace out